Sonny Lex is the artist's name of Leventa Marton. He was born on the 6th of August 1986 in Romania, but has been living in Hungary since he was four years old. From a young age, Leventa was already interested in music and in his early teens, he started to experiment with making electronic music himself. In the year 2005, he finished a trance track, which he called Puma. He did send this track to UK-based label Anjuna Beats and label owners above and beyond absolutely loved the track. So they played the demo version of Puma several weeks in a row in their radio show Trans Around the World. And of course they also signed the track to their label Anjuna Beats as well. Because of the 15th anniversary of Puma, I thought it would be a good reason to ask Levente about the story behind Puma. Since we were both in Prague for the Group Therapy 350 weekend in October 2019, we met up there to talk about this beautiful classic. My first question to Levento was, how old he was when he started to make music? I started about, uh, I was like 13 or 14 years old when I started making music. But it was, I wouldn't say it like even music, it was like I was trying to make noises pretty much with uh, really simple software, but it was fun. Okay. So you also had some equipment or was it just software? It was pretty much just a computer with softwares. I actually started using uh, tracker softwares, the old school like Fast Tracker. Fast yeah, That's, that was what I, I So yeah. what artists were you influenced by then around that time? Ah, you know, just the usual, like I was a huge fan of ATB. Um, I actually had a couple of his uh, CDs, albums. Uh, also, Ferry Corsan, Tiesto, <coughs> Mauro Picotto, just a huge legendary people. Yeah. So, uh, this year, 15 years ago, your track Puma came out. Um, what do you remember from the production process of Puma? Uh, not much, to be honest, but I remember a couple of things like uh, I used my first hardware synthesizer. I, I bought actually a uh, Waldorf Micro Q, which was a really good synthesizer. But the funny thing is, I didn't even have a proper sound card. So I, I had a sound card called Sound Blaster SB128 or something like that. that that's the worst sound card ever. So I put my Waldorf Micro Q into this shitty sound card. And I recorded this synthesizer through this bad quality sound card. So, but also like it made it a little bit different, a little bit more spicy because of that, because of this weird process. And so I, I used this synthesizer for the main synth, which which was like a, I mean, I, I still, you can you can still tell it's a, it's a really powerful lead synth in the, in the track, I think. So it's, you can tell it's not software, but uh, I used a lot of software as well, like uh, Atmosphere, there was a really good synthesizer called Vanguard from from Ref FX, REFX. Um, the process, I was just messing around, you know, it was like a naive something. I didn't even have a clue about music theory or music production. I was just messing around with softwares and I, I did what I like, what I felt. So that's how it came together. So how long did it take you to finish the track? <clears throat> if I remember correctly, it was about three weeks in total. Okay. So who was the first person besides yourself to hear the final version of Puma? Actually, I showed it probably to my one of my really good friends, actually through the phone, because I remember I created the the lead melody that like because i was struggling to to put something unique in the track so i didn't have the lead melody for such a long time so i finished this this intro section the the breakdown with the chords and everything but i, I still i was struggling to create something uh, special in the track so so and i remember one point and uh, one day i just i was sitting at the the piano and I started to make some melody for the for the breakdown and I was like wow that's really good that's really nice with the with the delay and everything I was like so surprised and, and so happy about it that I called one of my friends on the phone I, I showed him to it like what do you think about this and he was like wow that's so good man so was it easy to find the label for the track uh, back in those days like uh, you know you actually had to burn CDs and 
go to the post office and, and send to the labels, like not only emails or not our SoundCloud link, but you had to, to burn CDs. So it wasn't, uh, it was different, but also the market wasn't so saturated as lately. Yeah. So actually, I remember, as I remember, I sent about the demo about for uh, 10 different labels. I actually only Angina Beats answered. They gave me a feedback that they really liked the track. So uh, why did you pick Puma as a track title? Um, yeah, so the reason... <laughs> I actually, I fell in love with a girl, but um, yeah, she didn't even know about that. But she always, she was always wearing a, a hoodie, a Puma hoodie. <laughs> And you know, there was a, this huge logo on the back yeah. and I always saw this and I was like, I just fell in love with her and that was one of the main reasons. Okay, so she was wearing something from Nike, she had <laughs> Maybe, no. I felt like, wow, this is a good uh, title. Okay, so th this was your very first release ever, right? Actually, I, uh, I had a couple of uh, remixes. I won like two remix competitions, Hungarian re remix competitions, but this is my very first on release, yeah. So how, how old were you back then, when Puma came out? I think I was 17. Okay, wow, that's young. Yeah. But you're still young, of course. Ah, oh, thanks, yes. you too. <laughs> <laughs> so do you remember hearing Puma in a radio show or in a DJ set from somebody for the very first time? Uh, actually, I remember when uh, Obama and Beyond played it and in a trans around the world and I didn't even listen to it but the next day I got a few emails that from people like uh, they listened to the track and they really liked it and I was like what when and I checked the radio show at the track list and I was like wow they played it I was so happy about it but so I got few feedbacks from people for first okay. um, so which other DJs besides above and beyond did support the track I think Paul van Dyke played it I think uh, maybe maybe Ferry Corson played it as well. I think many of the the big guys in in those era played it pretty much in the, the radio. Were you surprised that people really liked the track, or did you already have a feeling that this would be a big one? No, no, no. You know, I was 17. I I, I had no idea what I'm doing actually. <laughs> so I was really surprised that people actually like what I did, and uh, you can't really. Tell that you can never tell if something's gonna be successful or not. Like this is what you just can't learn or anything. So, what is your personal highlight when it comes to the release of Puma? Hmm. I think I still love to to say that I had, I have a release which got an actual vinyl release and uh, it sold more than a uh, thousand piece on vinyl. A thousand units. Um, this is the best thing I can tell. Like it's, it's, it's such a great thing to, to say. Like yeah. yes. a thousand people bought a vinyl of my track. It's Especially so for your very first release. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, so I assume music was just a hobby for you back then. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I was a student. I was just messing around with softwares. Yeah. And did you already DJ back then? No, actually not. I never wanted to be a DJ but you know it's a part of the this this uh, business yeah. so yeah I had to learn actually DJing after that because I had a couple of uh, booking requests after the, the releases so what is the funniest or craziest thing that ever happened during a DJ gig <laughs> um, there's a couple one of one of the funniest ones when uh, yeah, so there was a there was a gig in uh, Saint Petersburg, and the night was great. The crowd was great, but there was one single guy who was standing there <coughs> in the front row, and he was like, he was just staring me at with, with the deadly eyes. Like he was staring the whole night like this, and I couldn't impress him at all. And I was like, at some point, it it became like my main main uh, reason to to impress him somehow, but I couldn't. And, and after I finished my set, this guy came to me and he was like, dude, I'm your biggest fan here. I love all your music. Please sign this autograph for me and stuff. I was like, really? Wow. And that's how I learned that, uh, you know, people enjoy music differently. Yeah. Like maybe some people enjoy inside themselves. Yeah. That's a good one. So are there any clubs or festivals you would still love to play at? 
there's a couple probably um, would love to pay play transmission definitely <laughs> at some point um, don't even know what to say and many ABG gigs yeah. hopefully yeah. So Puma is 15 years now, uh, are there any special plans for the 15th anniversary? Well actually I'm working on a remix for a couple of years now, but the thing is it's not so easy to remix it because it works because of the tempo as well, like uh, the lead and the delay, it just it doesn't really work on a slower tempo. Yeah. That's one of the things which is uh, really hard to remix it, yeah. I'm trying. Okay. So uh, what are you working on right now? Um, I'm working on my album actually, uh, my first artist album. Uh, I can't really tell too much about it. I'm just working on uh, many, many new tracks with vocalists. So that's the plan to have uh, an artist al album in the... In 2020? I mean, maybe, but maybe 2021. Okay. <laughs> so uh, besides the album, what else can we expect from you in, in the near future? Um, maybe a few mini albums, more EPs more remixes so what kind of music do you listen to in your spare time mm. i actually like classical music rachmaninoff tchaikovsky i love them but also love uh, chill out music I've, i'm a huge fan of above and beyond flow state yeah. i think it was a really risky thing to for them to release such a such a different album and I just love it and people love it as well um, can you tell us one thing many people might not know about you um, <laughs> I'm not sure if I can publish these informations but uh, I love cats you love cats <laughs> okay and the last question pineapple on pizza yes or no yes I Good. really love pineapple on pizza Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me, man. I'm a huge fan of the channel. Keep it up. Thank you so much. Perfect.